Today, I want to talk about something very serious, something that's impacting your laser projects probably without you even knowing it, and that's Kerf. Now, if you don't know what Kerf is, I can assure you it will bite you when you least expect it. The good news is, you can compensate for this, and if you want to find out how, then stick around. How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and I make everything, and thanks for coming back to the shop where together we make your world using modern workshop technologies. Over the last little while, the subject of laser kerf has come up, and I'm not sure why, but there's been comments in videos, and, and I've received email with people saying, hey, I, I designed my thing perfectly, but when I cut it, the parts don't fit together the way I expect. Well, what you're running into is kerf, and kerf is considered the thickness of the tool you're using to cut your material. Now, in the case of regular woodworking, that's the thickness of your saw blade, but in lasers, it's the thickness of the beam. And Although it's really small in, a, in the laser world, it's on the order of 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters, it's still significant. Now, I do think some of the, the comments I, I had in videos were predominantly focused around an inlay video I did, and I'll put a link up above. In inlay, when you're putting parts together, they have to fit seamlessly. And if you have 0.2 millimeter gap all around something, it's just gonna rattle around in the hole you're trying to put it in. So you have to compensate for this. So what I wanted to do is create a video uh, to address some, some requests that people have made in the channel to show you how I measure kerf and how I compensate for it in my drawings. So let's get going. So we're going to start from a simple drawing I threw together here in Inkscape. And again, you can use any drawing tool. It doesn't really matter. And the lines on here, I'll warn you in advance, are, are really thin. Uh, 0 0.01 millimeters. So let me select the first thing here just so we can see it. And you can see it's 0 0.01 millimeters. Now what we have is two vertical rectangles with a slot in the middle. And the reason for that is these, these rectangles, when we cut them out, we'll be able to piece them together in, with this slot and we'll get what amounts to a plus sign. And we'll use that to see how much slop there is in the uncompensated uh, piece. The rectangle in the middle, in addition to defining the, the slots here, basically halfway through each rectangle, it also defines the height. Now, if I just select that by itself, you'll see the height is 3.0 millimeters. And that's a kind of a coincidental number. The, the way I, I got to this is I took my three millimeter Baltic birch and I measured it with a caliper and it actually in this particular sample came out to three millimeters. I'm using laser grade Baltic birch, so it's usually pretty accurate, but I have seen it down to 2.85 millimeters up to 3.05 or so. So make sure you measure it and really all you wanna do is set the height of this rectangle to that and center it back on these two rectangles so that you can get a good gauge. So that's the, the plus sign and that'll be our sample piece to see how, how well we've done. Down below, I have this other kind of a template here, and there's you can see there's nine uh, squares here, and they're all very precisely 15 by 15 millimeters, and that in itself isn't that important. What's really important is that there are 10 vertical kerf cuts here, and what we'll do with this is once we cut this out, we'll put all these tiles back into this frame, and we'll push them all down to the right-hand side and we'll measure the gap on the left-hand side of this. And that gap is really the width of 10 curves. So from that, we can divide by 10 and we can come up with an average kerf for my laser. And very specifically for the material I'm using. This will vary from material to material as well as thickness to thickness. So if you really care about precision for something, we're making a box. We made a box in the last video uh, where we didn't do kerf compensation and it is kind of, you know, it didn't fit the best. It's, I mean, it fit, but it wasn't tight. So this will allow you to create those very tight finger joints, for example. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. And so I'll cut these out and I'll show you what the uncompensated plus sign looks like. And then we'll do a measurement. We'll do some kerf compensation. And uh, when we're done, we'll have a, a, a cross, we'll reprint the cross, and you'll see that it fits much tighter than it did before.
So I cut out the first test piece uh, completely uncalibrated. So in theory, the slot should be three millimeters. And uh, you can see when we put it together, it just, it slides together really easily. And there's actually a lot of play. You can see when I move it around there, it, there's quite a bit of flex. And then when I set it down, it doesn't even stay together. So this is not what we want. We want something to fit tight. And so what we'll do is we'll do that calibration measurement and we'll see what happens. So now I'm ready to do the calculation. So what I'll do is take that jig that I created and I'll put all of the tiles in it just loosely at first. And, uh, you know, make sure that they're, they're put in the right order. They're numbered and the numbers go in the lower left corner. So you can tell the difference between a six and a nine. And uh, there's lots of room to put them in. Then I'll usually take a, either a bone folder or a, just a piece of acrylic that I have cut usually for, you know, smoothing things down. Uh, and press the tiles to the right hand side and do that measurement and you'll see when in, when the measurement's done it comes out to like point or 2.33 millimeters for 10 curves so that means our kerf calibration uh, adjustment factor is 0.233 millimeters so i'll use that number and i'll i'll uh, make modifications to the drawing and then we'll we'll redo it Okay, so I'm back in Inkscape here and I'll highlight just the shape that I, I used for the first test. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'll just copy it and paste it to uh, a new layer. I created this raw parts calibration layer. And uh, what I'll do is paste it in there and you can see it's there. Uh, now I need to add the compensation. So for each of the height and width, I need to add two curves, so that would be uh, 0.466 in my case. So I'll add 0.466 to each of these. And uh, again, I can use that magical secret in uh, Inkscape where you can just put a plus and, and then the number you wanna to add to it. Uh, same over here, uh, or I can just type 466, uh, 466. And now for the, uh, the adjustment or the slot calibration, I need to do the same thing for the, for the width. So again, it's two curves, so we'll do 0.466 added. Now the height is, is the opposite direction because we wanna tighten this thing up. And so what we're gonna do is we'll knock, uh, I'll, I'll start with just, just one uh, curve height well, actually, I'll do them both at the same time here and we'll see what happens. Um, so what I want to do is minus 0.466. And uh, that comes out to 2.53 or 3, uh, sorry, 2.534. And now I want to make sure that everything stayed the same here. So I knew these shapes were five millimeters apart before. So I'll drag them together and, and make them five millimeters again. And... Uh, what I'll do to make it simple is I'll group those and I'll center this, uh, this slot back in the, in the middle of those things so that everything stays the same. So really all I did was scale everything up by uh, about two kerf sizes. And I'll go ahead now and I'll cut this one on the laser and we'll see if it fits together. So I cut a new calibrated piece out and we can put it together here and see what it looks like. So you can see it, it fits together. It's actually a little bit snug, but uh, more importantly, there's no uh, slop in the joint. It's really tight. And you know, when, it, when you put it down, it's not gonna come apart. So this is exactly what you want. You want to do that calibration. So now you know one of the best kept secrets in lasers. Yes, you, your laser has curve, and yes, you can correct for it. Of course, you're not gonna to wanna to do this all the time because it does require extra design time and extra cut time but it is a good skill to know when you need two pieces to fit together tightly. Anyway, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you're interested in some of the other techniques I use, I'll put a couple of videos up on the side here. Uh, by all means, go watch those. And if you're interested, I'll see you over there. Uh, otherwise, go make your world and I'll see you next time.